It's time once again for Mid Card Mana. We got here the loose cannon. We got over there Sam Killa, the wrestling connoisseur. One of us is Sam Killa. One of us is loose cannon anyway. It's up to you to figure it out. <laughs> Use these following clues. I know which one. Ow. Allison knows. That one's the first one's you, and then the second one's you. The first one's me. Yeah. And the other one's. Not me. Yeah, that's how it works. Anyway, this is our week in review for the WWE. Starting from Monday, November 27th with Monday Night Raw. So Monday Night Raw opens up with Roman Reigns. Talking about the recent salad days of the Shield with them reuniting, beating New Day, and him becoming the Intercontinental Champion just a week before. And then out comes the miz Taraj without the Miz. So it's Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel basically um, trying to defend Mrs. Honor because he's he's gone. He's actually filming Marine 6. And I actually, um, God, I hate to say it, but I um, identify with the Miz Taraj here. Why well, do you hate to say it? You love Curtis Axel. I do love Curtis Axel. And you he love Bo great. Dallas. And I do love Bo. He was great in NXT. They haven't given him a chance. <coughs> they haven't the given him all. a chance since they 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 broke the the Bo Dallas winning streak. Yeah. So here's the thing: like as soon as Roman Reigns comes out, they cannot shove more uh, platitudes up his ass than they did. I mean, oh my goodness, Roman Reigns—he finally got that title. He's avoided He's him. A his Grand whole Slam champion. He's a Grand Slam champion. They said Grand Slam champion. Like 20 times. More in that opening than I've ever seen. They never mentioned it for Dean Ambrose. I was going to say they only mentioned it a couple of days af and afterwards and on social media. Once, I think. When Dean Ambrose <laughs> became a Grand Slam champion <coughs> when he got the tag titles yeah. with Seth Rollins. It, and as soon as it happened, I'm like, oh, so he's a Grand Slam. And my parents like, what? And I'm like, yeah. Technically, yeah. He won the... Although, when he was first in S.H.I.E.L.D., he won the U.S. strap. Mm -hmm. He got the I.C. strap, feuding with Kevin Owens the first time, and then the Miz the second time. Um, he got the WWE World Heavyweight title mm -hmm. after beating uh, Seth Rollins for Money in the Bank. And finally, he got the tag team titles. So, I don't know what their criteria is now, because titles <laughs> come and go so much. And I Sit think nice it's in your chair, honey. I think it's still, still I think it's still four. Uh, just four, as long as like a tag, mm -hmm. a world, a US and an IC. Yeah. Something like that. Uh because I mean now we have the universal title mm -hmm. and there's so been I think so it many can be Raw universal and or world title. And things like that. So <clears throat> But yeah, they just could not state that more than than they could have. It's like, um, hey, did you forget he's a he's a he's a grand slam now? I would also just like to point out, last week when we were talking, what would be better than Elias versus Roman Reigns? <laughs> and they did not do my catchphrase, which was very sad. And I actually showed you this as you were leaving, so I don't think it was on video, but she could verify it. Was that um, they should do Elias versus Roman Reigns, and Elias should say, I didn't come to see who uh, wants to walk with Elias tonight. Just that Elias is going to walk the dog. <laughs> um, instead, there was like a really awkward variation of that was said. It wasn't, yeah, it was kind of... By Roman Reigns, I believe. Like, you want to walk the dog? Or something you wanna, weird. You want to walk with the big dog? Yeah, it was It was odd. It was just like, mm, no, you it was, delivered it was that. Forced. Like, if I was a writer and I would said that line, this is what you're going to say, Roman's going to say it, and then... Or Elias is going to say it, and then Reigns goes out and delivers that line. I would totally have been pissed. <laughs> that would have been like on the levels of um, <laughs> Kevin Nash said that he was going to go out and say, pull one on The Rock and call Rock call The Rock a bitch in their promo. But then Rock turned it around and called Nash a bitch first. And so Nash was left in the ring like, because mm. he didn't know what to do after. He said my line first. Yeah. And that's kind of what happened. <laughs> and then they just cut away. But, so um, they, they do end up announcing Elias versus Reigns, the IC Open Challenge, later in the night. They also announce a women's trio ma trios match mm -hmm. uh, later in the night. 
Um, so then the first match that we get on the show is Rollins versus Cesaro. Yes. Where we find out that Dean Ambrose is on his honeymoon, which yep. is why he's not here, or which is why he wasn't there. And that he's here, Sheamus, actually. Yeah. He's, he's here. He's in the garage. Um, Do you want to say no? No? Okay. He's busy. He's busy with Renee. Um, I'm here, I'm and yeah, Seamus is on extended sabbatical yep. in Ireland. At a Mohawk um, convention, according to yeah. Seth Rollins. Um, what is the honeymoon? It's it's like a vacation you take after you get married. That's a good one. That's, yeah. We'll it's, go with that. It's true. It's not false. <coughs> That's true. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I don't... You know, I mean, the match was good. It's a good way to start show Rollins versus Cesaro. And I mean, two, two solid workers, no two matter how, I, how much I hate Seth Rollins. Commentary, um, I was like, I don't understand, again, why they're pushing Seth Rollins as one of the strongest guys in WWE. I have no idea why they're pushing this. It's Triple so H's keep, son. They or, keep pushing this comment. Or they could push Braun Strowman. Right, I mean, we know Braun Strowman is like one of the... Is portrayed as the strongest guy in WWE. Oh, Big Show. Um, yeah, Big Show is still around. I mean, he's got to be. Mark Henry, we haven't seen him in a while, no. but we're we strongest seen him man. Since Rumble? We know Cesaro is super crazy strong. So yeah. you even have a, be in a match with Cesaro and someone to say that Rollins is in the top three strongest guys is like, That's no, he's not. That's a flat out lie right there. <laughs> um, and then, God. I mean, Unless John you're not Cena. counting Braun because he's a monster among I men. I guess. But I mean, John Cena, who is super strong. I yeah. mean, we know. This. So it's like, okay, well, right What's there, that? Strowman, yeah. Henry, Cesaro, Cena. Maybe says in the top five? NXT. I don't know. I got the NXT baby. I'm going to say he's not in the top five strongest within the WWE because then we also have Kane. Maybe, who they, maybe who he's in the show. top five, like, Fastest. I'll Big Show has speed. gone on record saying that Kane is one of the strongest guys he's ever been in the ring with. Well, yeah. I mean, um, look at Kane. <laughs> well, he, he tells a story on uh, Table for Three where I guess Kane picks him up to in like a power slam position and like the lights went out or something. And like, so Kane's like walking around with Big Show in his arm, like, what's going on? And Big Show's freaking out because he's, you know, like 400 pounds. Probably. He's like, put me down, dude. And Kane's just like walking around laughing. So, I mean, you got to be strong if you're carrying Big Show's ass all around the ring. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I have no idea why they keep pushing these kind of weird things on commentary. All this subliminal messages they're sending us. And some of them are, in are entertaining um, and some less so. Yeah. So, yeah, well, good match. Um, Rollins won. Yes. After King was, Slayer. It was like, uh, I can't complain that he won, but it was like the way that they're going to slide into a, a tag uh, title match next week. Yeah. Because Rollins won, which I thought was kind of weird. It's like, okay. Wasn't Rollins the one that took the pin in the first place? He might have been. Just saying. Uh, so the next thing that happened after that was the Cruiserweights talked to Kurt Angle and sort of talked about how they want to chance... Dear God, someone give him a chance. Um, so then they, um, he decides that there's going to be two Fatal 4-Ways, one this week, one next week, to determine who's going to be the number one contender for the Cruiserweight title. Um, so you, we're going to see a little um, bit more of that later on in the show. The next thing that happens is Samoa Joe versus Titus O'Neil. Um, which is an interesting little mini few they've had going. Um, every week Joe comes out, past couple weeks. And it's fought Titus or Apollo Crews or attacked or both them on of stage. Them. Yeah, or both of them. And that's what kind of happened on Raw was that after the match, um, Apollo Crews gets in the ring and Joe chokes him out as well. Yeah, so and, uh, he won. Joe won the match versus Titus O'Neil via the Coquina. Mm -hmm. uh, Apollo <coughs> Crews comes in to defend his honor and also gets a Coquina. Um. One, I'm really happy they, they're pushing Joe. Um, two, it's really sad that Apollo Crews that and it, Titus O'Neil are at the regulated. Of, yeah, yeah. Down to this. Um, and I think maybe they're doing it to say, oh, look how bad Samoa Joe is. You know, this is 
This is a guy that took Lesnar to the, his limits. And spoiler for the end here is looks like Joe's going to be a contender for the Intercontinental title. So, Hope so. Um, they got to make it. Joe look like a badass kid. Yeah. Since he's been gone so long. Um. But yeah, the bad part is, is like, what, could they have not done it in another way? Did taking or use out someone else? Yeah, did taking out Apollo Crews and Titus O'Neil warrant making Joe look like a badass? We know he's a badass. I mean, I don't feel like it was warranted to to take those both of them out, and make them look horrible in the <laughs> process. Like jabronis. Um, Titus and Apollo, we haven't seen tag that much. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is just to me is so weird. Why wouldn't you tag these guys and just use them? Even Especially if they're not with gonna the win. raw tag team division so thin. It is super thin. Um, I can't even think of that main tag teams. I know we get the bar. Currently, there's the bar. There's Shield, which there's, is uh, yeah, specifically like Dirty and Dean and, and Rollins. There's Revival, sort of. Sort of, they've been because, gone. Because um, Dawson, I think, is still out on injury. He's almost, he's he's almost fully soon. recovered, but, um, uh, but I even think even more so, why here. wouldn't you use them since the revival's gone? Mm -hmm. Matt Har or Jeff Hardy's gone, so the Hardy boys aren't there. Um, We're going to talk about him in a little bit, too. Yeah. What other teams are there on Raw to speak of? I mean, that's kind of it now. Uh, so it's like I'm beside myself when I think about, like, why wouldn't you feature this worldwide tag team? Um, having them fight the bar, you know, having them in any sort of matches. Same thing with uh, and it's the not even a, It's not even a tag team that you would have to keep together no. for long for you know for a long period of time. <clears throat> just have them in the tag team in, division mm -hmm. for now, just to sort of. Especially when you consider that they were pushing more people into the mix. Matt and um, Jason Jordan there for a little while, which is for a totally hot second awkward. Yeah, it was very um, awkward. But I mean, yeah, even the Mistaraj aren't used as a tag team. Missed uh, which, opportunity. Yeah, huge missed opportunity. Uh, especially when you had the Shield together having take that neck brace off titles. Curtis Axel. He don't need it. We <sighs> we'll all know get, he don't need it. We'll get to that too. <laughs> um, so yeah, the next segment, please. Rob, right after continue I continue ranting. Oh, one, one small thing that happened. There's another promo for Cyber Monday with the Good Brothers. Can't beat that. Sure can't. So, the next That's match. That's another tag team. They're even used. The Good Brothers, hardly mm -hmm. used. See, that's how little they're used. We forgot. I love the Good Brothers. And I forgot what where they were. Just... Another case of poor booking. It is. It's awful booking. And, and not using talent. And the thing is, it's three hours long, which I also want to talk about. Because um, you start off with... You start off with what's proposed to be your main event, which was Elias versus Roman Reigns, which comes at the top of the second hour, mm -hmm. essentially. Or at the end of the second hour. Which is now what they consider the main event. So... They're going an hour over the main event now. Yeah. Oh. And when I was watching it, it was the close of the show. I kind of just sat there. It was like, oh, that's the end? Yeah. That's it? And then I remembered, oh, yeah, the main event was an hour ago. And this is just, it's, it's just Come down. all over the place. Yeah. And if, to me, it's like if three hours is too much. Especially for then, the fans. Then fix it. And everybody's turn, tuning out after the second hour end. So you're putting your main event there. That's when you should end your show. You should not have all this feeler and uh, filler and cut that hour out and put it somewhere else where you can use it. Uh, if you're going to keep an hour on USA if, or whatever. I mean, consider you know, this. Or you just even keep it there and have that. Third hour be your women's show. Well, I mean, I'm a fan of, of just having it in a different place because look at the burnout on 205. Mm -hmm. So, so many people lose interest in 205 because it's right after SmackDown. And while, you know, you yeah. can every so often go for like 
five hours of awesome wrestling, like Power Struggle or something like that in New right. Japan. It's to have fun. to have wrestling for such a long period of time mm-hmm. makes it difficult for some people to digest. So it, yeah, and I mean, that's why I think that's part of the reason why I think two hundred five is 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 having a really hard time as far as viewership because people are just sort of like burnt yeah. out after the end of SmackDown. So <coughs> and that's what's they happening don't with Raw. Get around to catching two hundred five. People are burning out, and then then you have to question: Well, why even have that on there if no one's going to watch it? It's like I I don't even sit down and watch it when it's live. I watch it in segments. So sometimes I'll start watching and then I have things to do mm-hmm. and then I come back to it. So it's not like I get burned out. I mean, a but lot of people still, just watch YouTube recaps too. So mm-hmm. It's still a very confusing setup when, you know, instead of the show being booked like up, 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 up. To the main event, it. it goes up and then it starts coming back down, and it's very anticlimactic, which is not something you want to leave your fans with. Yeah, at the end of the show, going, oh, what did I watch? And I, I feel mean, unfulfilled. Even even looking at the big return of Paige last week, mm-hmm. that happened pretty much right in the middle of the show. Something that could have been given a good, <coughs> should have been the close. That could have been a good closer for a show, yeah. having a surprise return of Paige. I do think that I would use that that third hour later in the week, maybe on Thursday or something, and uh, have it as the women's show. And women or two of well, two of fives on two of five, so uh, probably just the women's show. Well, I mean, yeah. So you know, an yeah. hour long show, which could actually be used really well. Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night SmackDown, Wednesday Night NXT, Thursday Night Women, Friday Night Two of Five. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have a solid amount of time every day for people who mm-hmm. like you to watch wrestling and stuff like that. Every day. Um, it would, to me, it would make the most sense. Um, especially if we consider, and people can go back and, and probably find this on YouTube or, or elsewhere. I don't know. Um, it may actually, I don't know if it'd be actually on WWE Network or not, but the uh, Paul Heyman era. Of booking OVW. I don't think it's on the network, so it's, you could probably find some of it. You on could YouTube. probably find it on YouTube. But it was an hour long show, and he was booking guys that would eventually come up to the main roster. It was when OVW was WWE's farm. Yeah, it was spot. It was, it was NXT essential. Yeah, time. I was gonna say it was very, it's very much like NXT. It was the place that they used before FCW, which eventually became NXT. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was probably the best wrestling show on at the time. Did you know? Because Alicia he just Fox used it was an brilliantly. Show. Yeah. So, I mean, it so, shows, I mean, it goes to show that... That was the, uh, where the Spirit Squad ended up How they, from. yeah, how they, how they were able to nurture talent over there in a much mm-hmm. different way than they have in the interim. One hour format. And so, I mean, you, they could get a lot done with one hour on, on a TV show. Definitely. Um, with the NXT women, gets a lot I mean, done. Right. NXT gets a lot done. Uh, the women would have a, a broader format to, to be on than, you know, a couple five-minute segments where they try to cram every girl in. Yeah, and I think I think definitely considering the fact that they're so dedicated to making women's wrestling or having people take women's wrestling more seriously, mm-hmm. what a better way to do it yeah. than giving them their own show and having instead of just having their their show be total divas or total bellas actually have a show yeah. but those shows could feed showcase. into it yeah Easily. but i mean there's there's also a lot of um, the women's talent that have no <coughs> interest in being part of those shows so yeah. you see people like sasha banks and uh i think becky lynch has also gone on record saying that she does not yeah. she she wants to make sure that she keeps uh, Rebecca Quinn, which is her real name, mm-hmm. separate from Becky Lynch, mm. because there are two different sorts of well, I think parts that of they her could, personality. They could really start reformatting Total Divas if they wanted to include it as like a qualifier for uh, a women's show, and and having it look. I mean, reality TV really isn't reality. So, I mean, it's all planned. So, I mean, it's based in reality, certain aspects, they drum up a little bit more, of course. So, like, they could easily, like, have it 
be a show where they're following the women wrestlers like through the airports mm-hmm. and and making it look more real to set up the show and uh, you know the different feuds and and stuff like that. Uh, what was the next segment? Uh, so we didn't actually finish the the women's segment. Because um, yeah, it was Bailey, Mickey James, <laughs> and Sasha Banks versus Absolution, which is the new name for Paige's tag team. Absolution. Or a staple, I guess you could say, which consists of Paige, Mandy Rose, and Sonya Deville. And Ruby Riot? Um, yes. It'll be revealed any day now, I can feel it. Um, so, basically, what happens is um, Bailey and Mickey James get Tanya Harding in the back and attacked. Um, Tanya Harding should be on the team. <laughs> That'd be awesome. And so they're unable to make to make the match. And so Paige sort of extends an offer to Sasha going, you know, we beat you up and still you made it out here. So you must be tough. So, you know, do you want to join? Uh-huh. Absolution. You're either with us or against us. And with and Sasha goes and forearms Paige. So obviously she is against them. Uh, which sucks for her because she really wanted us to turn heel apparently. I mean, she could turn heel without them. She could, but... But they're, they're not going to do it. Yeah, they're not going to do it especially, with especially now after she took an attack from all three of them. She's yeah. like, she looks more faced than ever. Yeah. <laughs> so that, uh, that, that unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on what side of the divide you're on, happened. Um, so then we see a Bray Wyatt short... Um, very short video thing interrupt and then finally he comes out kind of goes back to his roots and cuts a, cuts a promo and everyone's like oh here. you're all dead <coughs> you're all and dead can you feel it which i love a very yeah it was it great was really and good very awkward like because he kept he just his kept tense. going with it yeah and it was like the fans which i really, think was 100 percent intentional oh yeah let me the make fans that clear really want to cheer bray is the thing because he connects to them on a level, um, especially when you have all these other faces that are just shoved down your throats that fans don't connect to. Mm-hmm. Um, so for Bray to to deliver a promo and make it awkward helps keep him ill. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then who comes out to answer Bray Wyatt? But Matthew Matt Hardy. Hardy. So. Um, comes out very it's team extreme yeah, still extreme. still that same music he comes up very um disgruntled i guess you would say uh, very disgruntled and gets in the ring matt hardy does not look happy and pretty decent match mm-hmm. you know for a short match you know this is not going to be does get the win with this is abigail he gets that's a, why i'm wearing a, a pretty, wyatt shirt today he gets a pretty good clean win um undeniably so yeah um, and he needs it so much right now and bray's always been kind of like we talked about before he's been kind of the measuring stick to yeah. who goes on next playing some music guys okay <laughs> okay um as far as who's gonna be you know mm-hmm. get a push or who's gonna be champ you know uh challenger or whatnot but bray keeps losing all these feuds yeah and you can't do that and still have the guy as the measuring stick. He's got to win some. You know, Jericho always was used that way, and he won a lot of his matches except the big, big ones of the guy that's going to get pushed on next. Yeah. So I'm glad to see, to see that, you know, Wyatt actually won one for which, once. Yeah, which which I was very pleased with. I was also very surprised. But, mm-hmm. of course, there was surely a reason why he had to win. Right. And that was to start the road. To, f- to further the Matt Hardy brokenness. To, to break push. him. And I, I, I really felt uh, like this should have been a moment that was bigger than what it was. Yeah. I feel um, like this should have happened even even perhaps as an opening match to a, to a pay-per-view or something. Because especially maybe, yeah. with, the, with the gimmick being so... People have been waiting for this for so long. Yeah. And especially because of the fact that this like, is what reinvigorated the Hardy's career and what like it was got just, the WWE know, interested in them. Go movie. ahead and do that broken thing, Matt. No, no, and you can't. That's, it's fine. That's what it felt like. And 
Yeah, include that at the end of the match. And I mean, um, Anthem I feel... recently released a statement saying mm -hmm. that they weren't going to pursue it anymore. Mm -hmm. Probably because they needed to save their money to pay their talent. Um, or sign some people. Because they need to. Yeah. Um, but I, I definitely feel like this should have been something much bigger. Um, either it as just, a closing yeah. to a feud. Like, you know, Matt Hardy has a really good feud with somebody. Maybe Bray Wyatt. And Bray gets in his head, and then at the end of the feud, delete, uh, delete, delete, maybe they have delete, like a delete, you know a hardcore delete. match or something. And Matt is broken, like he leaves it all in the ring, and you know Bray leaves him broken, and the Matt Hardy that comes out of this feud is broken Matt again. Yeah. Um, or you know us seeing Matt Hardy physical transformation during the feud mm -hmm. of the more clean shaven Hardy that showed up. And then finally turning back into this wild-haired Seth Rollins, you know, real homeless, daddy. Homeless Seth Rollins is what someone called it the first time. Yeah. Just, like, we and, did, our group had seen it. You know, so if they built it up through that and I see this this change and this transgression and maybe Jeff coming in and being like, hey, what's going on, I'm hoping, brother Matt? I'm hoping they, they, they have the, the, the pool of reincarnation. I hope so. <laughs> just, just for when Jeff's ready to just dunk him back in and then have him be um, the, Brother Nero. the crazy the crazy Jeff Hardy first. Like, this is Here, not the reincarnation say. I needed. And dunk him back and then it's like, ah, oh, the nefarious Brother Nero. It would be great. When, would when just throw all my money. <laughs> Brother Nero came back in Impact on one of the episodes and, you know, uh, Broken Matt was just pushing him, pushing him, pushing him. And uh, <clears throat> Jeff finally broke down in the match and was like, I don't need you to push, break me. I can break me. Um, he jumps off and he falls through a table. And um, he just starts laughing maniacally. And then Matt's like, oh, Brother Nero. <laughs> you know, that was good stuff. I knew you'd come. Unfortunately, it was the only good thing that was happening on Impact at the time. Man, um, I just went back and and rewatched Tag Team Apocalypto. Yeah, man, it was it was so, just I mean, classic. I, I do just feel like they WWE missed a bigger opportunity here. Oh yeah, because um, of the fact that I mean, this is huge for really a lot is. of people that have been following for the, the moment Hardys where even he's outside. sitting there and the crowd is is cheering and chanting, and you just see. And then him he just start says, doing this delete. convulsion, and the crowd delete. starts chanting "delete, delete, delete, delete." It was it was amazing. You know, it's it's coming. Fans are excited for it, and for WWE not to capitalize on it, they're idiots. So here's to hoping it that, just shows yeah. further that they're not in touch with the fan base. Well, here's to hoping that this is such a huge. It's so that it's obvious enough that they realize that the time to capitalize on this is mm -hmm. now. Um, and I think especially because Anthem recently just said they're letting go and they're not going to take any profits from this. And it's Matt Hardy's and, and Ruby Skies, so just they can they can have it and use it as they will. I think that... Well, I think Anthem's like, seriously, are we fighting over this? Why are we fighting over this, guys? Yeah. And I, I feel like the, probably the company just told its lawyers, like, let it go. Yeah. This is not something that we want to waste time on. And honestly, it's not. It's not something that they really can afford to waste time on. Yeah. I mean, they they probably could as a company. You know, I think Anthem. You know, if they really wanted to be dicks about it, but they it would be it would could, be a waste. But, yeah, it would be a waste of time on on, on all both fronts. Companies' parts would just lose money out yeah. the ass for this. Um. Yeah. The next game. Next. So uh, the segment. next segment that happens is Jason Jordan's backstage talking to his biological father, Kurt Angle. Um, <laughs> And he he basically talks him talks himself. It's not too late to into, get out of the storyline, guys. Into another match, except this time it's with Kane. Um, uh, holy shit! <laughs> After that, um, that is a short segment where we learn that it's Jason Jordan versus Kane. So then, uh, it's the first of the fatal four ways for the cruiserweight um, to find out who's going to be the number one contender mm -hmm. for the cruiserweight title. So it's Akita Tozawa. Noam Dar, Arya Davari, and Rich Swan, which Rich Swan ends up winning after a Phoenix splash onto Noam Dar. Yeah. So, first person to compete. Not a Rich bad Swan. match. Was and a good I mean, match, he's also but... a former cruiserweight champion as well. Mm hmm. Um. 
and pretty solidly popular face. I just still... To me, if you're going to feature them on Raw, it needs to be mixed in somehow. Because they're... Even though they're they're on Raw, it just it feels like it, they're just wave a sign yeah. going, okay, this is intermission, guys. Yeah. And I don't know. It's just Which is a disservice to, it is to them. To all around because... I, I do feel like um, the two guys are pushing as a tag team. I never can remember the one guy's name. Cedric Alexander and Rich Swan. Yes. I do feel like they could use those as a tag team on Raw. Funnily, and it, it appears that they might be the two that will end up fighting for the title. Mm -hmm. Or for the normal contendership. So, I mean, to not have them in the ring against, you know... Titus and Apollo or the Good Brothers or whoever, even the bar, you know, not have them in the ring against these guys is a disservice to both shows. I mean, they had such opportunities to do so when they had Akira Tozawa with Titus Worldwide. Mm hmm And we haven't we haven't got to see like a six man with Titus Worldwide or even a tag with really Akira and Apollo Cruz. And why not? Who who have a lot of experience working with each other from their time in Dragon Gate. So, again, I don't know why the booking is as it is. Um, it feels like so much of it is thrown together with only the main event. Which Set is, in stone, sort of. Which is at the end of the, your second hour of a three-hour show is the, is the only premise that they have. I don't know. Shame. Anyway, next thing is Elias, who sings with Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. And man, can they shred on the harmonicas? <laughs> I don't think it was real. I don't think so either, but I just, I just wanted to um, try and give them that. At first, I was like, what was this? And then I like, really was watching it, and I was like, yeah, they're not. And this was the setup, of course, to um, Elias Sampson versus... Um, Roman Reigns the for the IC title, which I was pleasantly surprised they gave them a decent match with each other. Let me it say, it was this. not a squash. Um, yeah, I'm not a super big fan of Elias Sampson, but I, I thought this Elias was a really Samson. good showcase of for him. I want to walk with Elias. <laughs> we got the beard thing going on, one set of footprints, <laughs> one set of footprints. I will carry Elias, <laughs> I would too. I'd carry him, even as good as he is. Because he carried Roman Reigns last night, or Monday night. Um, literally, at one point, he ran up and did a, an amazing uh, elevator lift into a spin-out powerbomb. That's right. It was a beautiful move. <coughs> um, Angie's getting all choked up about it, <coughs> thinking about it right now. Yeah, it's not the fact that I just bit into a peppercorn. <laughs> Same thing, that's what they're going to call it, peppercorn powerbomb. <laughs> um, if, if Elias said, I'm saying this. For the record, if Elias Samson comes out with the move titled Pepper, Peppercorn Power Bomb, I will buy an Elias Samson shirt. I think, let me let me sweeten the deal. <laughs> if he comes out with a move, the move called Peppercorn Power Bomb, the loose cannon oh my God. will get an Elias Samson tattoo. <laughs> Self enough, sure. There's always room for you to hate yourself more. <laughs> She'll get an Elias Sampson tattoo. Full back. <laughs> I was gonna say a sleeve. It's harder to hide the sleeve. It is. What you should do is you should get get a tattoo of him like this and on your back, and then the sleeve will actually be the other side of his arm. <laughs> Two sleeves, full back. <laughs> Peppercorn Powerbomb. <laughs> Peppercorn Powerbomb. So everybody make sure you hashtag Elias <laughs> Sampson Peppercorn Powerbomb. <laughs> For all five people that watch this. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, great match. I was actually pulling for Elias because I'm a heel. But also because I think Elias would get way more mileage out of the Intercontinental Oh, definitely. And I actually had a couple Reigns. moments where I was like, maybe they're going <laughs> to give it to Elias. I didn't think he, they would. Man, it looked great. Um, it did. 
He looks great. I was kind of like, you know, I don't know if they planned it this way or if they actually told Roman, like, hey, okay, make him look good. Or Franz just said, I'm going to make this guy look good. If he did, if Roman did think that, like, oh, I'm going to give Elias a lot in this match because I see something in him. Props to Roman Reigns. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if, I don't want to put Roman down here. We talk about Roman a lot. I have nothing against Roman Reigns. I just think not he's a personal level. Really bad. Yeah. Um, but if if Roman gave him all that in the match because he sees talent in Elias and is like, oh, this guy's the future, and if I'm around in five years, I want to be the guy that's going to wrestle Elias Sampson. Mm -hmm. Major props because for a guy that's only been around a short time, like Elias Sampson in WWE. Um, he hasn't had any main major feud. And for someone for someone who moved up to their main roster so unceremoniously. Unceremoniously, um, yes. He was not featured very heavily in it. Not day. at all. And even even for the, the whole draft thing when they when they made a big deal about the people who were coming up from NXT. Mm -hmm. He his, just wandered yeah, in. He just wandered in and it was a very And they were kinda like oh anticlimactic who is this? way to try and get him onto the main roster, but I think Oddly, that worked in his advantage. It did, I think, because I don't, I don't think anybody expected um, to see what they're, they're seeing. Nobody was ready to walk with Elias. And he didn't have any stories to get him over. Mm -hmm. He hasn't had any feuds to get him over yet. I mean, the he, small he one oddly, with Balor, but it didn't really... I'm with kind Jason of Jordan. Preemptive, right. Both of them were really, really preemptively shut down. Mm -hmm. Not in a bad way, but um, he's been able to get himself over. Yeah. He's been able to get out and work with the crowd without having to worry about a storyline, really, to be bothered with. Um, Which is fairly impressive has, when when saddled with such a gimmick as, as what he has. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'll give him this. A lot of people could have done much worse with that mm. and been completely dead on arrival. I mean, yeah. look at other people who are saddled with gimmicks that just don't seem to click with people or they were sidelined for um out of nowhere for certain reasons like look at um mike bennett miracle mike mm -hmm. bennett or mike canalis which i called that they were going to call him mike canalis and i was sad about the fact that they actually did it um he came in with the the power of love and then Maria Canales um, announced that she was pregnant and was not going to be on the road. Yeah, and, then, and that was the end. And then it died completely they because she was all of the charisma in it. And even after, it seemed like they really kind of pushed that he used to be an addict. And not on the show, but in like in other formats of yeah. media. That he used to be an addict and how he overcome be an addict and is a professional Which is wrestler. definitely a very Which moving is, story. Yeah. But then they decided to do nothing with yeah, it. Yeah, they've done nothing with it or him. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. You think they would put him somewhere. Honestly, if you're not going to do anything with, to me, it's like if you're not doing anything with anybody, slap them in a tag team, throw them in a match somewhere on the card. Mike Canellis and uh, Kurt Hawkins. Even though they're in two separate team. brands right now, move Nobody one knows. over to the other. Yeah. So um, the next thing that yeah. happened, or one of the things I would like to talk about within that was that um, the crowd actually during Elias Sampson's thing started chanting, "We want Roman," which I which I was surprised by. I was too, and, actually. And I was I was pleased at the fact that wow, it's really gotten getting Shield back together has really gotten people on his side. Um, so I wonder how, 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 Where or if he's Monday gonna night? he's gonna keep the momentum. They I were in, they were in Tennessee. Um. Um. So there's, yeah, there's that's sort of interesting. Hopefully they keep up that moment, or I, he keeps up that momentum with having people on his side. Because the first time after Shield broke up, it was just like. I, I, they, they were high on him, and then they realized no. Um, I, I and they really turned feel like really fast. This so. was just a, a one-off thing. And I mean, here's the thing. I did like how Elias used it. Though. It was like nobody wants Roman more than I do right now because mm -hmm. I want a chance to prove. Here's the thing with with that, and 
WWE has worked these areas so much that everybody knows what they're getting into when they go to a certain area. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, we're working New York. We're working Pennsylvania. We're working, working Chicago. Should get ready for the CM Punk Philly, change. whatever. So to me, it's like if you're the you're booking the show and you know how the crowd is going to respond. Um, for one, you have to be ready for that. Mm -hmm. That has to play into how you're booking your storylines and whatnot. And who you're um, booking to do what. Right. So it's like if you know the crowd is going to be anti-Roman Reigns, you really need to stick him, and you want him to be face. You really need to stick him with somebody that the crowd's going to hate more than Roman Reigns. Yeah. Or at least with somebody that's really, really good. Now, typically, like, Miz is really good at something like that, but most crowds Miz, hate Roman Reigns. Miz is Reigns. an excellent heat magnet. Yeah. He just and, I mean, he can, he can turn the heat up when he wants and work the crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, sometimes the crowd, they love him for that. And, you know, they will cheer him at first and then Smart. he has to work them, right? <laughs> Um, but to me, it's like, yeah, you you want to to book your your most hated guy against Roman Reigns, uh, if that's the case. And you know the, how they have Roman Reigns portray himself in the ring has a lot to do with it too. Um, there's a huge difference between they want Roman Reigns to be a bad guy. There's a difference between acting a bad guy or a badass rather. Uh, between acting like a badass and being a badass. Like he's bad, guy. He's not the guy. <laughs> so it's like Steve Austin, compare him, The Rock, Goldberg, Legion of Doom, mm -hmm. compared to Roman Reigns. Because it's the same kind of gimmick they want Roman Reigns to have, essentially. And, and I mean, if you look at the timeline for how long these guys have been in the company, I mean... Reigns, in the business yeah, itself. Or, yeah, Reigns is starting to get at that point where these guys really made an impact um, as far Reigns as... Is, how, for how long he's been within the WWE, specifically. Well, um, uh, actually, like, I mean, like, if, if we look at how long they've been in rest, like, The Rock would probably be the closest comparison. Yeah. Not just because they're family, but The Rock started off kind of basically in WWE, and they sent him down to USWA... That's he was right. Flex Cavana, I believe. That's where he kind of like got his legs under him. Then they brought him up. He was the Rock, and he was despised as Rocky Maivia. And it wasn't Ugh. until then when he got like a fire lit under his ass, and was allowed to turn heel and get his, you know, frustrations out because the fans weren't accepting him yet. That's never been allowed to happen to Roman Reigns. And will it ever? I don't know if it will ever, the way they, their philosophical views of wrestling, <laughs> um, which I think is bullshit, is is preventing Reigns from becoming a bigger star than than he's meant to. I feel they want him to be, but they don't want the legwork to go in. They're afraid they're going to lose merchandise sales. Um, but like if we look at Austin, who. <laughs> Had been around for quite a while. A long time. Also in USWA, bunch of territories. Put his time in WCW for a good many years. Part of the Hollywood Blondes yeah. also. With my favorite wrestler of all time, Bram Pillman. Mm -hmm. um, and then in ECW for a hot minute after he got fired. Mm -hmm. And when he came to WWE, he was ready to go. I mean, he was angry and frustrated <clears throat> and he had all this built up inside of him. And I don't feel like Roman Reigns is there yet with that mentality. Like he doesn't have this tremendous amount of experience. Well, I think I like, think it's also not green now. the fact that Roman Reigns, and you know, this might be a popular opinion, unpopular opinion, might be controversial, non-controversial, whatever. But Roman Reigns, comparatively to a lot of these other guys, has been pretty well protected within his oh, career. Yes. So I think that there's very a, well there's what we what we've referred to as there's you know the bubble. Mm -hmm. That has really sort of shielded him. Ha ha ha. One for the loose cannon. <laughs> just one. Um, from having a lot of these same negative experiences that really fueled these other guys yeah. to become the superstars that they became. 
I mean, and it's not outside of the realm that he can still get there. Mm -hmm. I think just because of the fact that his experience has been... He's he's been relatively n nurtured a lot more compared to these guys. Yeah. That it's going to be harder for him to forge that own path for himself. Mm -hmm. Because and because it's because they're so high on Roman Reigns I mean, and like, the Eric... past successes that he is sort of reminiscent of. Mm -hmm. Um that he already has this sort of nice cushion around him to protect him from anything as Devastating some of the other things that have happened in Stone Cold's career before he was Stone Cold, or The Rock's career before he was The Rock. Mm -hmm. career. Um, we could compare him to Goldberg, essentially. Now, it was Eric Bischoff's... It was a good comparison, actually. ...build, basically. Yes. At a time frame where... We were looking for anti-heroes. Mm -hmm. You had Rock, you had Austin, um, as the notable ones. You had uh, Sandman in ECW. Yes. And WCW needed somebody. To, um, to have that same you, sort of level. You kind of had Sting at that time, but it was a very slow build with Sting. And he had Goldberg come in, and um, it was a very... Well, Sting by that time awkward... also was, was, a, was a vet of the business. Yeah. Um, but I mean, he was he was a baby face, yeah. and they were having him be more anti-hero yeah. by turning him into the crow. <laughs> um, but this was also a time when Goldberg come up that um, the training aspect of wrestling was finally kind of opened up mm -hmm. and shown. So we actually like really watched Goldberg in his training days in so many ways. Like he would have matches against nobodies and he sucked. But we saw this diamond in the rough, so to speak. Um, trying all these different well, things we were, that he was we were learning. We also shown, shown this, this person who we were supposed to perceive as this diamond in the rough yeah. because of um, the sort of persona or image or, that was built up around him. Mm -hmm. And I mean... But the one cool thing was that he had one or two moves that looked really, really Devastating. Really yeah. And it sold it, really. And I mean, like, he was from that, that era was, where as long as you had those one or two moves that really looked yeah. good, you would be able to sort of be seen as a good co um, also, contender. Also, I think, you know, being able to work with guys like Arn Anderson. Um, oh, man. Did you see his, his spine buster on Dolph Ziggler at Starcade? It's amazing. Still got it. Um, a lot of these other guys there in the, you know, in the power plant that were working with Goldberg at the time. Mm hmm um, I don't want to say William Regal because apparently Regal like really stretched him one one time. Um, you can actually watch that match still on YouTube though. But anyway, my point I'm is, sure it's on the network too. we saw Goldberg get built up, and um, there was a connection with the crowd, and it wasn't a stretch from Goldberg's real life person. Mm -hmm. The character and the person was almost identical. You know, especially since you would see Goldberg really headbutting the locker room, busting himself open before the match. <laughs> yeah. Even, that even was the recently. Person, yeah. You know, and so with Roman Reigns, his character and his person aren't exactly the same. It's not that he isn't a tough Samoan, but he's more like Ricky Steamboat than. With, yeah, with Goldberg. how his real life is, he seems a lot more like. Like Steamboat, where you see that he is definitely a grounded, more yeah. family-oriented man. And especially when they had him in all those um, promos with his mm -hmm. daughter a couple of years ago. I mean, and to, to me, missed like, opportunity to have a really sort of solid... That should be his gimmick. ...genuine character that someone, or that people in general, could connect to on a much different level than just... Him being the silent badass of the shield. Right. It's like, I would much rather him be this Ricky Steamboat family man character. Especially compared to a Kevin Owens, which is the evil family man character. <laughs> like, those two bouncing off each other would oh, be amazing. Is, I, 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 um, love, I love bad guy family man. I it really would be great do. seeing that. It was that, so good. That connection. And you he, know. he used that in, in NXT from, like, almost the very beginning. To have the good family man, the bad family man, and them coming together mm -hmm. to protect their families it would be a great story. But um, 
that's essentially that should be Roman Reigns is that he's the good family man, not that he's this uh, road warrior badass type because he's not. You know, the road warriors really were the road warriors. Like these guys, you can listen to their stories. In real life, they would say, no, we're not dropping the belts. And they wouldn't. That would be the end of it. They ran the territory because they ran the territory. Yeah. You know, you didn't tell the road warriors what to do. They still got paid. And they kept the belts. Well, yeah. And didn't make anybody. Because you don't, with the road warriors. Right. So, I mean, that was their image. And that's the exact image you got in the ring. They really were the road warriors. And Roman Reigns is not that guy. Yes. He's the family guy. Yeah. And to me, it's like if it's that was... It's not too was, late for him to get there. He just needs not, to make some real big changes in his life. He wants it, to be I mean, the guy in real life, too. Oh, you mean for him to be the badass in real life? Yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Uh, no, I think his personality type just... It, it doesn't mesh let, well with it. Yeah. Um, he's not Umaga. Well, I mean, it's also... He's, you know. at a, he's at a different level in his life where... He he is a family man, mm-hmm. and I mean he's the only one in the shield that is a family man. Right, I think that should be if they played that up. I hate that this is turning into a big Roman Reigns thing right now, but yeah, we're gonna have if to they, finish if, the yeah. rest of this is in a different. Video. If they uh, if they played that up and disbanded the shield with that idea, I think Roman would be way more over. But anyway, back to the crowds and stuff. They should be able to fill these crowds out better to. Get the wrestlers the the reaction that they want instead of just forcing it down their throats. But I'm a smart guy that'll cheer for Kevin Owens. I did what? it at the I did it in Hawaii. Yeah, I mean we all but have was, our favorites. I was also the the person that that was just taunting the Bollywood boys. But if I feel like if the booking was done right or smart, then even when our favorites lose, we would be happy. Um, because it would overall it would contribute overall. to a story. Yeah. Um, um, so that we don't was just the like main watching events. fighting. That's why we like watching wrestling is because there's also a story yeah. involved. If I just wanted to watch like blood sport, I would watch a lot more MMA, which mm-hmm. I'm also into, but not uh, not on the same level. <laughs> um, so that was the main event. Elias did not win. Had a great showing as Roman Reigns. I was really sad that Roman again. This goes against his character. His real character i just don't believe when i see it like he attacked a helpless curtis axel yeah i thought that was a misstep yeah i thought that was misstep. a complete misstep honestly because Two for curtis angie because <laughs> curtis axel was standing there just like yeah he's right, like man. i'm i'm right. the neck I'm, I'm i'm not gonna do anything man and then he starts to walk off and then he changes his mind and goes and attacks curtis axel and the crowd it's, turned on him. Yeah. It's... Uh, I mean, consider this. You didn't attack Curtis Axel. This could have been a chance for Curtis Axel to later on be like, Oh, I owed you one because you saved me. Yeah. And then just cost cost the Miz a rematch against, against Roman Reigns. Yeah. Easily face turn for Axel. The chains are off. The chains are That was the main event. But the neck brace is on. In the middle of the program. So the 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 match that came right after that, which is incredibly short, was Dana Brooke versus Asuka. And which Dana Brooke claimed that she was ready for Asuka. But just kidding, nobody's ready for Asuka. Flying arm bar bitch. That was possibly the shortest match in WWE history, I think they said. Yeah, it was... Um, and it was very I think fast. the only match that might have been shorter, actually, um, is Liv Morgan versus Asuka from back in NXT. Mm. Um, which was, I think, maybe... A second less than that. Because, see, the, the thing... So the thing is, with, with that one, it was a flying armbar, but with Liv Morgan, it was just a regular armbar. Or no, it was the Asuka lock. So she cinched the Oscar lock super fast, and then she tapped out. Um, whereas this one, I mean, it Dana was... Brooke flew through the air, landed, and then tapped out. Yeah. So it, it took her a couple more seconds. It'd be interesting to see. Definitely. Uh, so I live. Morgan is on SmackDown. The Kevin Nash <laughs> uh, powerbomb to Bob Backlund. 
it's been beat. <laughs> um, next match? Uh, so the next match was the, the last match of the night, and that was... There was a lot of wasted time in there somewhere. Jason Jordan versus um, oh, Kane. Yes. So in which Jason Jordan just barely misses getting back in the ring in time and I, loses via count out. And then Kane goes, um, once he rolls back in the ring, Kane goes and attacks him. And then who comes out for the save? But Finn the, Balor. The Except demon. Finn Balor doesn't run out or anything. He does his entrance normal speed. And there's then, no way he's going to save Jason Jordan. And then he ends up, I guess, having a match himself. That gets called on the fly yeah. um, versus Kane, which Finn Balor wins by disqualification because Kane steel chairs him. And then, of course, the big damn hero moment that we've all been waiting for, Braun, which we knew was going to happen. I, I, it was really an awkward end. Um, it was cluttered. For one, it was very cluttered. I don't and convoluted. I felt. I don't understand why Jason Jordan versus Kane really happened. Like I get, you know, because oh, Jason Jordan wanted to prove, Dad, I, you know, I, you know, my leg. I'm fine, week, Dad. I'm fine. I'm, fine. I'm okay, Dad. And so to I can prove fight, it, Dad. I'm gonna fight. Will you love Kane. me now, Dad? But the thing is, is like, can I be a champion now, Dad? We're we're trying to prove. Jason I just want to be Jordan. like you, Dad. <laughs> we're trying to prove. <laughs> That's Jason what's gonna Jordan happen to Jason Jordan. Is a coward. I mean, it's essentially what they're trying to prove. Yeah. So why would he challenge? And Kane? I mean, he punked out. He punked out in the match with Braun Strowman. Last week. Why would he challenge Kane? That's what I don't get. Like last week he had to fight Braun Strowman he, about Stephanie. So And he talked himself into it, which is great. I loved. Um but I mean he has to keep the facade up. It just I'm just not buying it though. I yeah, I mean I I'm don't I don't think it's it. working, but I think that's the justification behind it. You know, I feel it. like it would have been better if he was like, Dad, I'm gonna prove myself tonight, I'm hundred percent. Last week was a fluke. I want to fight the biggest and the baddest there and he, is. And, Kane, and Kurt Angle will go, yeah, all right, I'll book you against Kane. And he's like, Titus O'Neil. I won't fight Titus O'Neil. He's the biggest and baddest. And Angle going like, no, you hurrah, hurrah, fight hurrah. Kane. And something to that effect where it shows, okay, he is a coward. And he, then he's kind of like, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Kane. That's who I meant. Kane. I guess yeah. Kane's pretty tough too. Yeah. I mean, not as tough right. as Titus, but. You know, he's been gone a while. He's no dad yeah. of the year. So, yeah, for him to mention Kane, I was just kind of like, really? You're going to fight Kane? So they and had the he, match. And then he, he, before the match, he gave, he gave this long speech about how a lot of people have been doubting him. And he's here to silence the doubters of the people who doubted that his, his knee, which last, last time. When I he landed, like they he felt something that. in his knee pop. But he's here to address the doubters because he said doubters they a lot. They wouldn't have even needed that uh, promo or segment if they had done the, the original part properly. Uh, it just, I don't know, it felt too pushed to me. So they have the match. He gets counted out. Same thing again. I don't know if they'll play with it next week. Balor comes out and the excuse is Kurt Angle just made this match on the fly. And it was like, but Balor also had unfinished business with Kane because Kane like smashed really? him around. At least show us that then, you know. Show Video us, package, something. Show you know on the bottom of the screen, and you're going, "Hey, you got to get out there and save Jason, or you got to get out there and take out Kane." Now's your I, chance, I it's Just like if we're just going to tell for revenge against Kane. Yeah. So then that match is like uh, skittish because they started the storyline, and I don't think they know what to do with it yet. Because there's the Braun storyline too, and then Braun comes out. Kane's not just embroiled with lots really of people right now. Really for the save, but for revenge. Yeah, which, which which ended up playing like it was for the save. Yeah, it honestly. felt like the save at start, but I I didn't care for the revenge part because if we're trying to build Braun as a face, him taking Kane out with the chair and the throat. Oh. Through, yeah, it's like... With him gagging to end draw. You know, I'd much rather he just come out and power slammed him or overpowered him. I mean, he did or get a couple Kane power run. slams in, but then just also Have chairs. Braun can't come out and Kane just run away. You know, I think that would have probably been a better finish for it than... And then it would have made... Kane. And then it, <laughs> it would have made Braun Strowman look even better because look at this 
giant, mm -hmm. the and big red machine, it. running away from someone. Yeah. But they didn't do that, and that's how it ended. And it was like, oh, he's destroyed Kane's throat, and he'll never breathe again. There's Braun Strowman, and it's this is, this is the end. Yeah. And I was just kind of like, It oh. seemed kind of thrown together at the very end, and I think it was a missed opportunity to actually have all of these guys, and not just, mm -hmm. you know, Braun and Kane, but have Finn Balor and Jason Jordan also have a good moment, too, that yeah. advances their storylines with so, Kane and with each other. To wrap it up for Raw, because I think we'll just do a SmackDown separate video. Yeah, later. we got it. It's going to be too um, To wrap it up with Raw, Elias Sampson, good. I'll give him a thumbs up. Um, I did. I did like the the Samson segment. Finally, showing us some broken mat. Delete, Good. delete, delete. Uh, the delivery of broken mat not that great. You know, could have been better. Wyatt finally getting a win. Yeah. Good. So, some good things, but a lot of missed opportunities. And this raw, I mm, on a scale of ten. Core. Six. If any of you watching know where that's from, leave a leave a comment. Um, or don't whatever, it's your life. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> but you should like thumbs it up the video. Please like it. Follow us. Subscribe. Like and subscribe. Somewhere. Somewhere. There might even be um, a subscribe button on yeah. the video somewhere. I don't yeah, know. It, we don't know. We don't know what we're doing. Yeah, um, <laughs> it was it was a Decent role with some good things, but overall left a lot desired, I feel. And I mean, hopefully this leaves a lot of room for them to to grow storylines or improve anything in the weeks leading up to Royal Rumble. Because that's the next thing that Raw's going to be competing at, because Clash of Champions is SmackDown exclusive. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. They got a lot of, uh, a lot of road ahead of them to it's get like to they, They've got a lot of time. But a lot of time. Yeah. On the road to WrestleMania. On the road to Royal Rumble.